Welcome to the Builders Podcast, episode 59, Jeff Chan, agency founder, path to becoming a web developer, how we learn, finding mentors. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast, hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube, and after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share if we've earned it. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Hello again, everybody. Uh, Welcome to another The Builders. We are here today with Jeff Chan. Hello. Yeah, Jeff said that I should call him George the rest of the... uh, No, please don't call me George. Oh, I told you that story. Yeah, he well, he had. You want to tell that story real quick? That was a good story. I love that. Yeah. So the short of it is that at my very first job as a front end developer, uh, the lead developer that that hired me uh, introduced me around the company as George instead of Jeff, and my name is spelled G E O F F. So the first three letters are the same as George. Um, and even six years later, when I left the company, people were still calling me George. So. <laughs> I love Thanks that for story. That yeah. back up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so unique. I was like, that's to get that that wrong is interesting. Yeah. Um, but but what I loved about it is you just rolled with it. You're like, okay, fine, that's my name. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. It was yeah. like it was like my first job too, right? Like, so you, you don't want to like offend anyone. Right. You're nervous. <laughs> you know, so you just gotta go with whatever happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so anyway, so. Jeff and I uh, know each other from Twitter, of all places. Um, I've been, uh, last few months, I've had a number of guests from Twitter. Uh, I, that wasn't even a thing like a year ago. I wasn't on Twitter very much, but uh, I've mm-hmm. been meeting some great folks on there. And, um, and uh, so that's fun. Uh, and Jeff and I were like, we were liking each other's stuff. You know how it goes on social media. And we're like... And I think you reached out. You're like, you know, since we're like doing that, maybe we should, you know, officially interview or uh, talk to each other in private message. And next thing you know, here we are. Um, but I've had some great conversations with you, and um, you have a really uh, interesting background in business. Um, you are a developer. He is a developer, um, <laughs> and uh, he's got a business team, partners, all that good stuff, really interesting stuff. Um, and now in terms of the, the builders, what we like to do when we first have a guest on the first time, we like to dig into their story a little bit, their origin story, talk a little bit about their background and uh, their journey uh, to become who they are today. So we are going to do that. Um, so Jeff, you want to talk a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us uh your origin story, like where you live um, and what that yeah. journey looks like? Sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, I grew up in uh, Mississauga, uh, Ontario, which is in Canada, uh, just outside of Toronto. Um, you know, I won't, won't, won't go super in depth with the whole background. I'm originally from Singapore, came here when I was three. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was super interested in, in tech from early on. Um, you know, I used to game on my dad's old, uh, I don't even remember what computer it was. It must have been like a, a Pentium 1 or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I kind of got into web development when I was like 13 because I wanted to build mm-hmm. um, a MySpace page and I wanted to customize it. I didn't want it to look kind of, you know, stock. So I learned some HTML nice. and CSS then. Uh, fast forward into like high school uh, I learned a lot of Flash. Um, that was the thing. Back, I'm kind of dating myself, I think. With these yeah, technology. you are a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MySpace. Yeah, what I'm, is that? I know. <laughs> I'm. A, I'm a, I think I'm a little <laughs> bit older than most people uh, expect. I'm 35, so uh, I, you know, I kind of saw the whole dot com bubble. Like I was a teenager when that happened. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, I went. Uh, I started doing some. Uh, Flash did did made a few GeoCities websites, Tripod. Oh, cool, GeoCities. Yeah, a bit of a throwback, right? Uh, Angel yeah, Fire, those of those, yeah. those of you that remember that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I just kept, really was just doing it for fun. Never thought it was going to be my career or anything. Um, mm -hmm. Then when I went to university, uh, I did a whole bunch of things. Uh, I originally wanted to actually be uh, an animator at Pixar. Uh, so I went to oh. school for art, uh, did a lot of, I did multimedia at McMaster University uh, in Hamilton. And uh, eventually, the thing that kind of got me into my career job uh, was that um, I was getting married. <laughs> so I proposed to my wife, uh, bought the ring with my line of credit, my school line of credit. <laughs> and uh, and I, very quickly, it was like, oh, I need, I need money. So <laughs> I should probably get a job. Uh, and this was like right near the end of university. So, um, so that's kind of what led me to just like, get out there, really start to look for, for something out in the industry. And, uh, I, I had a, um, one of my wife's friends was the manager of a dev team at a, a large nonprofit here called world, world vision Canada. Um, yeah. and, uh, that got me the interview. Um, I was still in my like last year of university when I did that interview. So I actually, I got the job like by luck, I think just, just because they, I don't think I nailed the interview or anything, um, but they liked my, how willing I was to communicate, um, you know, even in the areas where I was more deficient, um, you know, where I, I just kind of said like, this is what I know, but th these are the things I don't know. Uh, so yeah. they liked that, that I was very honest and, and good with the communication side of things. And I was very eager to learn, like I think a lot of new devs are. Uh, so they gave me a chance, like the position was back then, every position was like five years of experience. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> it's like, it's like one or two years of experience. I think it's, it's a little bit different nowadays. But um, yeah, so that's, that's how I got my first job. That was a front end development job. Um, I did a lot of like, uh, building landing pages. Back then it was HTML, CSS, JavaScript and jQuery. That was a stack. Mm -hmm. So I did that cool. for um, it, the, the job kind of evolved and I did a few different roles, but I was there for six years. So wow. that's, that was my, yeah. yeah, sort of, that was a bit long. I said I wasn't going to be long winded, but it, it ended up being a bit long. Uh, but that's no, how I, I made yeah. it to my first dev job. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's good. I mean, that's, that probably formed a really good foundation for you, um, having a dev job like that. Um, so, so you're, going back to your, so like kind of circling back. To your like your childhood and stuff and, and be cut, getting into tech or were you influenced by anybody like or is it just like a natural thing you said you like games you're playing games and stuff and that and i think that does kind of because i think back when i you know and i go back further than you i'm going back to the 80s when we were programming in basic <laughs> and i was creating you know we had a little computer and i was creating i was probably creating very basic games if it was creating games at all, or I was playing these old Mac games. Um, but certainly the two kind of went together back then. It yeah. was made you curious and you wanted, you know, um, and of course I, out, outside that never led to anything, you know, decades later I became a web developer. But are, are there any influences that stand out? Somebody that inspired you or, or you, that, was like a partner in crime in terms of, of doing development and stuff, or was it just something that you just um, fell into? I think over the years, there were a few like people in my life where I can look back and say, yeah, they were instrumental in, in like how I thought about development uh, and, and maybe had a, they were sort of part of the reason I ended up coming this way uh, in my career. Um, like, you know, early on, I remember my dad going back to school, um, you know, like we were an immigrant family and I remember him going back to school for C plus plus development back then. And he, he had built a couple of games, um, and then he wasn't able to get a job. And so he ended up starting, uh, like 10 different businesses, <laughs> nine of which <laughs> failed. One of them, he's like the stereotypical entrepreneur. He, he started 10 Perfect, businesses, yeah. nine failed and the last one stuck. Um, but that's where I, I think I get a lot of that, um, you know, sort of, uh, entrepreneurial, I don't know, whatever it is that's baked in yeah. me. Um, 
Yeah, but but yeah, in terms of development, uh, I mean, I saw, I remember seeing that and thinking that was so cool that you could like write code and make a game on a computer. Um, and at the yeah. time, I was like really into games, so uh, I remember that. And then in high school, one of my friends who was just like an amazing coder, like when I think back on it, he was an amazing coder for his age. Uh, he had written. Uh, uh, in in C, I think it was C plus plus or C, uh, but he had written Blackjack, uh, and then he had written a whole bunch of different card games himself, just kind of teaching himself, and then he wrote it in a way that we could play it over a network, which is oh, mind blowing wow. to me. I I wouldn't even know how to do that today, um, yeah. but he did that on our school's network, and we kind of had this underground <laughs> like Blackjack game that we knew how to, and it was all like text. It was all like he had he drew all the graphics with with um with like like text and stuff, which was so cool, yeah, yeah. but I remember that oh, thinking cool. that wow, that's amazing um that you did all that with code, so there was like there are a couple of instances like that where I look back and and uh you know certainly when I got into the web uh originally uh it was WordPress that that kind of got me interested, uh which I think you'll appreciate. Um, but I, I did my like final year thesis project on building a custom WordPress theme. And this would have been in 2006 or seven, I think it's 2006 or seven. So So it was pretty, it was basically a blog. (laughs) It was, yeah, it was a blog, but like, I wanted to, to, to build a custom, like my own custom theme. And, you know, there wasn't much resources back then. And. So it was this whole thing where I had to learn how PHP worked and then learn how WordPress worked. Um, but that was a lot of fun because it, I think it was the first time I really took a technology that was unknown to me at the time, uh, which was PHP. Um, mm-hmm. I knew how to build simple websites with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But in terms of server-side stuff, I pretty much had no experience. And, and that was a, a really big turning point for me, I think, in terms of my knowledge. Like, it, it really made me understand web development on it on a different level yeah what what do you, you so a lot of this you attribute to just working on projects yourself just doing or you know obviously you had to that was a project in college right that was like a, yeah 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 that was my project. final final year call uh, uh project yeah yeah um yeah i look at back look it, kind of my first because I did that coding back in the 80s. That doesn't really count. That was like, you know, basic, literally. Um, but uh, but I didn't really do any web development myself until the 2000s when I was um, building my own sites for my for my own products, digital products and stuff I was selling. And, and I built some memberships and did all this stuff. And one of the things that... Back in literally around the same time, 2006, six, seven, eight, WordPress was not yet a CMS. It was back then. It was just basically for blogging. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we, but I wanted it to do more. <laughs> and I remember I wanted to because I liked it for whatever reason. I was I just yeah. liked WordPress and um, and maybe because I just I knew it. I started to learn it. I used it a lot and and for blogging and stuff, but I'm like, but I want to build a site using this and how I had to hack it to do the other things and actually structurally look like a site or act like a site. And um, so I, I had a lot of fun with that back in the day too. Create, created like members areas for it with it. And, um, so it was, it was kind of a blend of creative, challenging myself, like, you know, creating, a, this is what I want to accomplish with it. Let's figure out how to get over over those limitations and figure out how to do it. But yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. So that, it sounds a lot like my experience, uh, customizing uh, WordPress because back then there w- weren't themes that allowed you to just like edit a page, like a site. It was all blog driven, like you were saying. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I did the same sort of, th- actually the, the domain I bought for that project was enter the force.com. Enter and, the uh, force. Enter the Force, yeah, um, and it, it's not. It was wasn't even uh, Star Wars related. <laughs> the thing I built was like a website for students uh, that were thinking about entering the workforce. Um, 
but I think I, I think I still own that domain. I might. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have. There's so many domains that I've I've owned over the years, <laughs> literally hundreds. Um, they used to do a lot of niche websites and stuff too with WordPress. Um, mm. Maybe some other scripts. I don't know. But yeah, I've done so much. I don't remember half of it. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 cool. Um, I, I just you know, I think it's just one of those things too. I similar to you. I think it's just kind of uh, I don't know if it's natural or just something you're, you just find a passion for. Um, when you're talking about your fa- you know, how your, your dad was doing some programming and stuff. Like, I think I, that made me think of my dad, and my dad, for whatever, um, for whatever reason, he really was into, he liked electronics. He never had, he kind of had a career in electronics. He worked for, uh, John Deere company, uh, for like over mm-hmm. 30 years. And towards the end, he had gone back to school and got a bachelor's BA in business and stuff, but. But he was also like working with measuring machines, doing a lot of uh, technical stuff, working with computers and all that stuff. And he actually had old computer repair business after he retired for like 20 years. Uh, so I, so he kind of influenced me to really like tech. He, he gave me things. I remember a little electronic set when I was a kid. He gave me, um, I had like a science fair project. My science fair project was building a robot. <laughs> so... So I've always had that. So it's kind of interesting. I, I kind of, so I, I kind of fell out of that for a number of years. Did art and stuff. Did go went crazy doing other stuff, you know. And uh, to, but somehow I found, you know, I did find my way back to tech, which is kind of a natural progression, I guess. Yeah, um, I, so I have so much admiration for people that um, that work in hardware, um, like the hardware side of things has always kind of eluded me. I think. It, where I don't quite, I'm not good at it. And my, yeah. my dad, he has an electrical engineering background uh, and he used to be, he used to work on airplanes and stuff in, in Singapore uh, in the Air Force. Um, oh, wow. okay. But so he would always show me these little things like how to, yeah. you know, make a little flashlight, uh, like a simple little flashlight and just like put the wires together and stuff. Like that sort of stuff stuck with me. Um, yeah. But I never ended up doing much with hardware, so I, I always admire people that are able to do it. Yeah, he, you know, I, I guess he, he was in the military for like seven, eight years too. So I think he did some stuff. He like worked on radar radar sites and crazy stuff like that. Oh wow! Um, so I think he learned Great. some of that from there. He was, yeah, he did like uh, he maintained equipment and stuff. So he always had that kind of a as a, you know, he was obviously young when he learned all that. Um, did all that but then he and then he always had i remember he had all these elect electronics books like old ones it was back in the 70s 80s you know like uh and and i don't know if he went to school or he just tried to learn that stuff and then when he retired he was actually he was playing around with um what is it called neutrino <laughs> not neutrino that's like a, it's like an element <laughs> it was like these little bots and stuff like electronics and he was learning C plus plus. So he always said, yeah, it's just, it's interesting um, to, uh, you know, it's like how, how that kind of, yeah, all that influences you. Um, and, but your dad sounds like he was just, just the same. He was like uh, really into electronics and, and doing that stuff. What did he end up doing for a business? Um, well, the, the last business that he started, which which stuck for uh, pretty much the yeah. last twenty years, uh, is an exhaust uh, business. So uh, he has he has an exhaust shop in Oakville, Ontario, um, and it, it, I think it's funny, uh, but the reason that that business took off is because of the first Fast and Furious movie. So that came out, uh, and then every young guy wanted like you know, a car with an exhaust, um, oh, that, that, that okay. sound. Gotcha. and they, they, they had a, a shop that specialized in, uh, you know, custom tips and exhausts. So they were able to, uh, and, and I think a big part of it is like, you know, building these, um, putting together sort of these custom exhaust systems for people being able to bend the pipes. And, and mm. I, I know so little about it. It's, it's, kind yeah. of ironic my dad runs this business and i know very little about cars um but from what i understand it's it's the fact that they're able to, to customize the exhaust and that's why people right. go to their shop 
Um, so yeah, like the Fast and Furious movies, he he always tells says uh, that that he credits that for their business's success and that why they've been around that's, for the past twenty years. That's why I hear one of the keys to business is timing. You know, like yeah, that sounds like it was perfect timing. So yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, it it wasn't at the beginning. I, they actually had a tough like journey um, where they, I think the banks wouldn't give them a loan to to get the business started. Um, there was three partners at the beginning. The, the company name was JPG Exhaust. Um, and then eventually one of the partners left because it was just, they were, you know, going to debt. Uh, I think at the height of it, they were $150,000 in debt personally. So it, wow. that was, and thinking back now, like, I mean, that was like the 90s. Uh, like, I can't even imagine, you know, being in that much debt and trying to provide for, your family and everything so that's a big chunk uh, of change yeah that's when the yeah, wife is yeah. like telling you you know get a real job exactly <laughs> yeah like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean i can I, I i can relate for sure i mean i i yep. went through a similar thing in 2020 but not to that extent at all um you know yeah. we were in a much better position but um yeah it's it's crazy so yeah that that's his business that's what ended up sticking he's still working there i think He's a uh, little over 60 now, so he's thinking about retirement soon, but uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's again, that's something that that's got to influence you on some level. Like when you see somebody that you care about you know, overcoming those challenges and leaving in something enough to not give up. And I mean, that's, that's an important part. If you're going to be in business, you've got to understand or be okay with uh, the challenges that are going to come your way and, and failing and, how to deal with that and cope and um, stick stick to it. Um, so okay, so back to you. Uh, so so what? So okay, well I was going to ask you one of the things I, I had. You know, I just got a couple notes here. I'm like one of the things I was going to have is you you really got into um, in the last ten years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kind of got into more JavaScript. You got into uh, doing React. Now you have that. When did you start working for yourself? Did you, you were working for that company for like six years, you said, as a front end? Yeah, I can, I can give kind of a brief history there. So like yeah. I was at World Vision as a front end developer for six years in total. But during that time, uh, I'd say about two and a half or three years in, um, I went to a conference in Montreal called Confu. And they like it just really opened my eyes to what people were doing uh, out there. Uh, I, I remember seeing a talk. Uh, where there's this um, team of nine people. And I think most of them were developers and they had built this platform where uh, people could upload their prints or like their images and they would do print to, uh, or image to canvas prints and they would ship it to them. And I was just like, wow, like just these nine nine people like decided to to create this one website that does this thing and uh, and the whole talk wasn't even about the business. It was more about how they had automated a lot of their uh, their build process uh, back then. Was with I think it was either Grunt or Gulp, um, yeah. that was the the popular one. But anyways, like there's a bunch of different talks like that, and it just made me realize, wow, like I'm building these like little static landing pages, you know, with HTML and CSS and you know, really at, th at that point, I was like cutting and pasting JavaScript. I wasn't really writing JavaScript. Um, and, and, you know, Jay Curry was doing a lot of heavy lifting too. So I, I just kind of made a decision at that point, like either I'm going to go in this like all in and, and really just jump in and try to be good at this, or I'm not, I'm going to try to do something else. And, and I think at the time I was like playing around with the idea, like, do I still want to pursue a career in the artistic side of things, right? Like I had, I had this um, childhood aspiration to become an animator at Pixar. Like that's what I wanted to do. But I think eventually in life, you kind of come to this point where you, you, you have to be more realistic with where you're at versus, and I, I'm not trying to like say, don't go for your goals. I think that's definitely something that should always be there and drive you. But mm -hmm. I think that, when I, when I looked at what was in front of me and also what I was interested in, like animation just seemed so far from where I was in life now. Like I had taken this path and where I was at, like the stuff I was making was cool. I, lo I loved it. 
So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to become like the best JavaScript developer I can be. So I really jumped in uh, that the the latter, like I'd say, I, w I should have probably left that company, to be honest, around two to three years in, because I, I knew that in order to grow, I needed to get out there and, and get more experience. Uh, the reason I stayed is because I had a kid, my first kid. Yeah. And uh, the, the company was really great. They moved me to work from home. Our team got to, to work from home, I think, four days out of five. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. Um, and my, my wife was on mat leave. Uh, she also worked for that company. So, so uh, we were both actually there. Um, so that's why I ended up staying there. And I just continued to learn on my own for a little bit, uh, jumped into Angular back then. That was like the hot framework uh, that had just come out. Uh, so yeah. I did a lot of that. Uh, I started learning a lot more backend. I want to be, I want to have a broader knowledge of, of uh, full stack development. So I started uh, learning a lot from one of the guys there who was uh, sort of the, I guess, architect, like a software architect. Um, he did, uh, but like their stack was .NET. So, so I learned a lot about backend development and, uh, and .NET, but I wanted to do more JavaScript. And I think Node was still pretty early on in those days. So um, I hadn't quite started to learn that yet. So eventually after the six years, um, I, I left for a dev shop, um, sort of like a little consulting company called Dev6, uh, and I was there for about a year. Uh, so there I really got to dive into Angular. Like I'd say in terms of like trajectory, like my learning went, it was just like, it went from like kind of slowly incrementing to like straight up because I they just threw me straight in to work yeah. where I was working with Angular every single day. I was working with clients, you know, building new things. Um, and then at the same time, around that time I was really like my we evenings and weekends were all just like learning like stuff I built I always had this theory um, I'm very much a more hands-on person like I learned by doing and I think a lot of developers are um, but instead of like reading documentation or, or, or learning from watching I would just try to build a bunch of projects so I would I would literally start up a project like multiple times with angular just so i would get used to that sort of ecosystem like like setting up a project like that and and then that way i would get past that initial hurdle of um or that initial barrier of like oh i'm still not used to like working in this folder structure or this like with these types of files and looking at this type of code so I want to get past all of that i did the same thing with react when i jumped into that uh, and node.js like i just started up like I think I made it made a, an arbitrary number. I said I got to build at least ten projects to feel comfortable. It's like getting the reps in. If you if you're ever um, if you've ever done any sort of training with sports or whatever, it's like just getting those reps in. That was the thinking. So I was like, I got to get ten projects under my belt so I can feel comfortable to actually start learning in this ecosystem. Um, how did you How did you choose the projects? Did you just uh, come up with ideas uh, on the web? It was it was a mix between like practical stuff that like either someone had asked me to do, uh, like my dad. I think at one point he wanted a scheduler for his business, so I was like, oh, I'll try to build one. Um, other times it was like, like I don't I don't really have anything, so I'm just gonna build like um, like look up an idea or or just run with an idea I had. Um, but like. It, it was never about the idea. It was always just about like getting the reps in, like just building mm -hmm. another project, getting used to the tech. Cause I really wanted to be good at the tech, right? Like I wanted to be good at the coding. So I wanted to uncover as much as I could. And then eventually I would always identify like the gaps. Like I don't really get what's happening here. Like what, like there's some magic happening here. I don't get it. And yeah, then that's yeah, where I, I would backfill. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially with I, Angular. I know that yeah. <laughs> I know right. feeling. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I would, that, that's been the way, like, I kind of noticed the trend. Like, that's been the way I learn. I, I do a bunch of stuff that I go back and I backfill like the gaps by watching videos or reading because I, I need to have done a thing to understand it and then understand where I'm, I don't, where I don't understand what's going on. Then yeah. I can backfill it with, with a bit more, um, 
context. Do you do any structured like courses or anything like that? If you need to learn something, like I try. Like, something? I mean, a traditional education like never really like worked for me. Um, you know, I was like a pretty average student. Um, I think some of the the courses in university uh, equivalent of college in in uh, in the U.S. like the, the four year degree, like the best ones that I had were the ones I barely attended because they were all project driven. And I would take that project away with me and I would do it and only go when I actually needed information or needed help. So I was very like practical in that way. Like I tried to get knowledge when I needed it and when it was applicable to a thing I was trying to build or do. Yeah. So I, I have, so I'll share my experience with that. You know, um, now I'm in the realm of WordPress, right? Um, because I started using WordPress in like 2004 or five when I said, you know, I want to do web development design, build websites for people. Well, WordPress seemed the natural thing to, to focus on. And I'm all about specializing in something. So while everyone's out doing all this fancy stuff, React and Angular and all that, I'm like, eh, WordPress. Um, but, but something happened to me too. So uh, probably around 2011, 12 is when I decided to actually pursue it. I kind of made a decision, like you made a decision, like I need to decide what I'm going to do here. And I was, I was pivoting out of doing uh, like other like internet marketing and affiliate marketing and all this other stuff, pay-per-click advertising, all this other stuff that I was doing for like almost a decade. Um, but I, one of the things I learned through that was that I like to build websites. And so I made the transition, made the de decision. The first couple of years as a freelancer, I started to get, work on projects and stuff, but I was, I was, uh, I think you mentioned, you said something about copying and pasting or, or just kind of, you know, <laughs> you didn't know how something worked exactly, but you, you find a snippet out there, you throw it in. Oh, okay. And, and a lot of hacking, a lot of stuff together and, um, and it worked, it was fine. I was getting work done for some clients and stuff and I was doing basic front end. Um, and I had learned stuff over the years, having, built my own sites and stuff. So, but I really never dug into the programming languages and really tried to understand what was going on under the hood. I just would try to like put things together and, and <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how I got things to work sometimes. Um, I, they probably uh, had a lot of issues, but, um, but at some point and it happened, it kind of happened in parallel with getting an actual corporate job as a web developer. And where I was thrown into this thing, like you were thrown into something where like, okay, now I'm working in this every day. Now I have to actually build a framework for WordPress themes and to build a framework for WordPress themes and to actually build a theme that we're going to use this boilerplate to build all these, you know, themes we're going to sell. Now it's like, I really need to know what's going on in the functions file. You know, like there's a lot of stuff in there. Like I have not known over the years. I just kind of ignore, you know, it works. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Cause a lot of stuff I did early on was I would take like an existing theme, like a default theme, I would create a child and I would just style, you know, just use the child theme to override things and the parents and, and kind of mm -hmm. you know, style things or whatever. Um, so that was kind of how I operated, but now I needed to work learn the code and so i would i took the functions file that's where it started like you know line by line what does this do what does this function do how is that you know and just learning everything just diving into it that way the other thing that helped was going out and there was a couple courses i took i took well, one of the one of the decisions i made was that i wanted to learn javascript better you know, the little I knew, you know, jQuery and stuff that you hack together. I wanted to really learn vanilla JavaScript. And so I took a, a, a course, uh, one of the courses online for JavaScript, went through that, took one or two others, and then started applying it and working with it. And one of the things I learned with JavaScript, I was okay with PHP, but I didn't really know programming in general. But learning JavaScript... I started to realize that a lot of those same principles apply to PHP and kind of there's this uh, programming foundation. And I, and I took some programming foundations courses and, 
And I started to realize, to understand the actual, what programming was all about and how that related to web development, what we were doing. Mm-hmm. So I went through that same kind of um, uh, process. But the other thing, like you said, the other thing I did, same as you, is I learned better from just doing stuff and yeah. just taking on projects I probably have no business taking on or or coming up with my own projects. For a while, I was building little games, JavaScript games, using some frameworks out there. Um, and yeah, that's, it's like, it's, it's interesting. It's different than it's like structured learning, going to college, yeah. you know, taking you know, some courses sure. or whatever. It's learning by doing is kind of the yeah. most, probably the most important thing that helped me become a better developer yeah. over time was just taking on challenges. Yeah. If you think back to that time when you were first learning, um, like digging into the functions file with PHP and, and WordPress and, and, and when you were digging into JavaScript, do you remember like a feeling like, do you remember how you felt like feel like, was it overwhelming? Did, do you remember like certain hurdles you had to like bypass? And then when you got over those hurdles? Well, I, I think it was like kind of shifting. Like you, you, maybe you did still didn't understand something and, and it would, it would, it, it was difficult. And like, I just don't get it. And so at some point I would actually learn something and maybe, you know, they can use the word backfill. It would kind of like go, okay, now it feel okay, now I understand that. Maybe I was working on something else and I understood that better or whatever. It just it was a very sloppy process. I don't think it was anything I don't know I don't specifically know as I was going through that functions file, like if I understood everything. Like it took me a long time to understand what a uh, um, just elements of that just unique things to WordPress. Um, yeah. Like what is PHP yeah. versus what is like specific to the WordPress framework. WordPress and how they do things and and how they handle it. Like internationalization, I eighteen N, like I didn't know what that was. Um and how that was even a thing in WordPress. And so that was something I had to figure out because I was building site themes we were gonna sell. Um but yeah, it's it's uh I remember the the feeling I had was though at was like my eyes were opening um it's like i had been in this fog for like forever especially when i took i took a was actually on um uh, linda it's now part of linkedin learning um but linda had this course it was uh found literally foundations in programming and i think it might there might have been one like with servers and stuff too or, or databases and i just took those because i i'm like i felt like that would be a good found literally a foundation yeah. but that those also like learning concepts and words related to pr- programming like definitions yeah. of what that actually is patterns and things um though that just seemed like it just it was this feeling of just getting it and like now I'm, I, I felt more legitimate maybe like it wasn't like, yeah, yeah. you know, trying to fake my way through stuff, you know, I was starting to really get that every, especially when you start to learn what functions actually are and what a class is and what a, you know, like, or how, and how, yeah. to, when you start creating your first function, like one of the things that I like in my business now, what I do with, with my, you know, our agency, one of our specialization or what we do for our clients is custom work. Yeah. So when I got to the point where I could now, okay, I can't find a plugin that does that, or I can't find some snippet online that does that, but I can write my own function that does that. That's when it all changed. You know? Yeah. Um, when you're able to do that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I remember, I remember a specific, like learning specific things. Uh, like as an example, I remember when I was learning react and i didn't quite understand like what the benefit was of react until i went back and and uh you know a couple of years later i was like you know what to be a better developer I, I really need to get a a good solid foundation of javascript so i read through mm-hmm. uh what was it called javascript the good parts i think or i can't remember what the exact title of that yes. is and and you don't know js um which is a, a pretty popular one too um, and started to like 
build my own um, little, like, like you, you did, you know, write little games and things like that. And then I realized, oh my gosh, like manipulating the DOM sucks. You know, like it's it's actually super hard and it, a shadow DOM totally makes sense. And And that's like, you realize what the benefit or like all the things that React is saving for you and other frameworks and libraries too that do similar stuff. But you don't really, it's kind of like, again, that idea of backfilling the knowledge, right? right? Like, yeah, you don't actually, it, it, I find the same thing with WordPress. I actually am always amazed at how much is baked into WordPress when I go back to it because it does so much for you. Like it, it's incredible how much it does for you. Um, and so like, you know, developers usually take it for granted because it just does this stuff automatically when you have mm -hmm. to build it from scratch you really appreciate what it does for yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, well, I, and like with React and Angular, I mean, I, I, sure there's a plenty of developers out there that work in those frameworks that ha don't really know vanilla JavaScript or the under, you know, like, and I think that's, I think that's okay, um, but it's really valuable to really dig into the underlying you know, programming languages and stuff that actually but then you do appreciate those things. And also it just makes you better. Like you can start doing things that like I, I look at WordPress as a framework. I mean, there's an API, there's all this stuff you can do pretty much anything with WordPress. Um, mm -hmm. And now, now actually WordPress is using react and, um, mm -hmm. uh, with Gutenberg blocks and all that stuff. So it's, it's become more of a JavaScript framework itself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's, you know, that I think you mentioned it earlier, but that feeling when something doesn't work, but you just can't figure out what it is or how to fix it. Like, I hated that feeling. And, and I think that's what drives or what has driven me to really want to understand the underlying sort of mechanics of how something works, right? Like whether it's React or Angular um, or WordPress, but even like, I guess on a more holistic or general sort of, um, view on, on development. Uh, I remember there was a point in my career where I felt like, like I need, I need that broader understanding of the full stack. Like, like I understand what we're, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm building websites. I'm writing code. It's running in a browser. The browser is just, uh, it's just software. And ultimately, it all runs on computers somewhere. And so I was like, I really want to understand like the full, the real full stack, like how computers work, how how like lower level coding works, how all of that stuff works. Mm -hmm. So like the way that I, I I did it, which I don't know, like everyone has different ways of learning. I know for me, a lot of it is doing, but also I think it's it's like like solidifying my understanding by like talking with people. Like I find that a lot more effective than actually just reading. So I went and worked at a startup after that, the dev shop that I worked at. Um, and there were a couple of guys there, actually two guys in particular that I remember. One guy was a very senior software architect. Uh, and so he had a really broad understanding of just software development as a whole. I think he had been doing it for like 20, 20 years or something. And, uh, yeah. and so I went to work with him and then another guy who worked on a, another, a different uh, piece of software at the same company, but he had been a game developer at Rockstar Games. And so he, he actually still coded in assembly from time to time. Um, but oh. he, he was a super low level coder right. and he, he could code all, pretty much anything. He had written stuff in JavaScript. He had done stuff in C, C sharp, like he had, you know, built native applications on mobile. So, like those two guys, I remember like that year I just learned, like I, I literally would just like corner them and like ask them questions. And I didn't care if it was like yeah. stupid questions, like, you know, like, like, um, that, that see, w would obviously kind of seem dumb or make me look like I just didn't understand basic things, but it, that's yeah. what helped me gain a pretty good foundational understanding of like, just like computing and software, uh, how all that stuff yeah. works. So. Yeah. yeah, that's another really important component to learning, you know, right? you can learn from classes, you can learn, you know, there's plenty of websites online where you can fill in the gaps, um, learn by doing, creating projects, but learning 
but finding a mentor or something that, you know, we're working for a company. Like when I worked for Rapid Crush for uh, the basically four years, year as a contractor, worked with an employee for three years. Like you, there was, number one, there was people in that company that had been in the software industry for decades. They worked for a huge Fortune 500 companies. So learning how they think about software and how building software, that was something I extracted. But also there was a, a programmer there, um, a PHP Zen certified, like rock star, right? That was there. He had been with that company since day one. He was brilliant. I worked it with him on, on building stuff, uh, you know, worked with him building APIs and stuff. Um, and uh, the things I learned from him are were invaluable. But it was it was even beyond that though. Like we would we would, we would review code, we review code together and talk things through in a way he would just he was very patient with me, <laughs> which is good. Um, but also it's just like we had these conversations where like where he would like. Tell me, uh, you're better than you think you are, you know, yeah. don't be so hard on yourself. You know, like all of us, all of us doing programming or web development or whatever, you don't know everything, you know, more than you think you do. Um, and you're better than you think you, you are. And it, it, he was always reinforcing me that way. And, and I realized that just in general, there's always things we're going to be learning. We're not going to know everything, but, um, yeah. yeah, it's real important yeah, to have those people awesome. in your lives too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's great that you had a mentor that was, um, that was that encouraging and also that could give you that like sort of mirror it sh kind of like show you how someone else is looking at you versus the way that you look at yourself is usually incorrect. I mean, we're usually harder yeah. on ourselves than what other people see. Right. Well, in working with teams in general, um, so when you're out on your own, if you're just a freelancer, just working on your own and trying to do stuff for clients and stuff, it's ha it's hard for you to really, you have nobody to compare yourself to. Like you might feel that you're not good. You know, you like you see other people that are on Twitter or wherever that seem like they got their shit together. <laughs> I'm going to say the first swear yeah. word for a while on this program. Uh <laughs> But they, they, they have it together and they seem brilliant and they know all this stuff. But um, and and you're like, you're just not feeling like, you know, um, that you're, you're in a good place or that you're never going to learn everything. But as soon as you start working with another team. So one of the things that I at Rapid Crush I did as well is I hired a team. I had like I hired like four or five developers, a, design, a couple designers. And um, but even working as uh, with the people I was hiring, I started to see that there was commonality between us and like everybody has their kind of thing where they're really good at this or maybe they learn, need to learn more on this or um, strengths, weaknesses. I have my strengths, weaknesses. It's like, we're all in this together. You know, we're all at maybe at different spots. Maybe we have a longer experience, shorter experience, or we have more experience in this area because we specialize in that. But, um, but ultimately, and, you know, we're all on the same journey. And yeah. uh, I think foundations is important, though, because um, like when I learned foundations of programming and stuff, when I decided to, you know, really focus on that for a while and learning one programming language really well with JavaScript, yeah. um, that it, it laid, literally laid that foundation where now everything I do now kind of um, builds on that. Yeah. And well, it, it's huge for your confidence, right? I think... Yeah. That's the the thing that looming imposter syndrome is just always in the back of your mind, and uh, th this is one thing that uh, that that uh, software architect uh, at the startup I worked at always said. Um, he said that like with with knowledge comes confidence, like and and I think one of the most empowering because you know when you start out your career, you're not going to just be knowledgeable about everything. There's going to be so much, there's going to be a lot more that you don't know than you do know. And probably for most of your career, that's going to be true. Yeah. But, um, but I think that like one of the most empowering things is, is, is just accepting where you're at, like being open and honest with your team. Like, I think early on for me, at least I, I always felt like I needed to put on the facade that I knew more than I actually did. Um, yeah. 
And the thing is, like, what I knew back then was enough. You know, it was enough for me to become a developer. So it should have been enough for me to 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 feel confident in myself. And I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably the place a lot of developers are. Um, even even like developers that have been in the industry for years and years, like you still feel like, oh, I could get better at this or I need to learn. Like so much of our identity is tied to like knowledge um, and, yeah. and just like yeah. what we're able. And also we, I think a bigger, a different, totally different issue is just social media and seeing people out there that are like, you know, amazing and super smart you know, you just compare yourself naturally to those people, but a lot of those people are outliers too. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you re- realize the average person isn't, you know, the engineer working yeah. at Google or something. That's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's in building that confidence. That's why it's important to, to make those connections. And I, I think that is something that, uh, you know, finding a mentor, finding people to work with or work for a company for a while or whatever, uh, can help your confidence because you start to be really able to relate to other people and uh, it starts to feel more human. Mm-hmm. We, I'm going to, I want to just say that I think we found our theme for this um, podcast. <laughs> we, when we started this podcast, like, what are we going to talk about today? I'm like, I don't know. We'll just go with the flow. You know? <laughs> so there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Um, but we may have to have a, another part, a part two to this or something uh, down the road. Um, but what I want to kind of, uh, pivot here a little bit and just talk what, so what are you doing today? You're, you're basically, you, um, got into development, you worked for a company for a while, and then you are out on your own now and you're, you've got a business. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing today. Sure. Yeah. So I, I worked at the nonprofit, worked at a, a dev shop, worked at a startup, um, and then had the opportunity uh, to do some contracting work. And that's when I started stack five. Um, so I actually incorporated right away. Um, and, uh, it was just me for probably a couple of years. Um, and, and most of the, uh, for a long time, it was really just me doing contracting work alone, uh, for one client. Um, and, and it was just a lot of the same stuff I had done throughout my career. So just uh, Angular development, React development, Node.js development. Um, eventually, I, I had a friend that worked at the same client, Adidas, uh, Jordan. Uh, it, we decided to just partner up and try to make Stack 5 into something more, like try to build the team around it. So... Yeah. We decided this in 2019 and we were like, yeah, 2020 is going to be our big year. And uh, of course, 2020 was just terrible. Um, We actually lost. We had a couple of good leads. Like we had a startup we were going to work with that year. um, And and everything just went away when the lockdown happened. Uh, Adidas even just like closed closed everything down. Uh, All of their vendors, you know, just didn't get paid. Yeah, you were working yeah, you're doing stuff for some big companies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Company. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, everyone like people didn't know what was going to happen in 2020, right? Like when when the first lockdown yeah. happened. So, um, yeah, that was interesting times. Um, we just tried to keep busy. Um, we we did we launched a couple of products ourselves. Uh, Vo.io, uh, which is still out there. Uh, ReactLibraries.com, one of the domains that like. I think one of the best domain purchases nice. that I, I've made. Yeah, that's nice. It's, it's a nice, yeah, it's a nice URL. Yeah. It, it, we get tons of organic traffic just because of the URL. Um, yeah, no kidding. So we, we just kind of try to keep busy. <laughs> Sorry? I said, good job. You know, as, as no, an ex- okay. a, affiliate marketer, you know, niche marketer, like domains were domain names, like the URLs were so yeah, important so to important. get you know, good traffic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it was interesting because um, we didn't know much about marketing or, or launching a product. So we, it, like that was a good learning process. Um, but halfway through 2020, we ended up just things just started changing in the market. Um, I started also doing more business development, which all that meant was I was reaching out to people in my network, like connecting with people trying not to be selly because I know for myself, I hate when I get these cold emails or you know, random messages on LinkedIn saying, Hey, you should buy our software or something. 
So yeah. I really, I just did it from the standpoint of connecting with people I'd work with, connecting with old friends and letting them know like, hey, this is what I'm doing right now. Um, and that's it, that, that was it. So from that, it was about a month or so of doing that. And then eventually we started getting a few leads for, for some websites, a um, couple of small projects. That really took off in the latter part of 2020, where I think at one point we had like six to eight contractors on different projects, along with me and Jordan uh, also working on projects. Uh, then at the beginning of 2021, we hired our first developer uh, to cure. So first team member to join us officially. Um, things kept rolling. We were able to get a few bigger clients um, and we grew our team to five. Um, there was a little, like, uh, we had one team member left, but then we just hired again last month. So our team currently at stack five is five full-time developers. Um, it's gotta, so be, it's gotta be five. Yeah. <laughs> it, can't, it can't grow anymore. I guess now it's just, yeah, you you're done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. It's, it's funny. Cause I, I think that's probably the most common question I get asked, like why stack five? And I don't actually have a great answer. I, I think I just, I picked uh stack because it's a nice technology term like you know like a data structure yep. also it refers to like full stack um and then five because at the time we had five people in my family my me my wife and my three kids so i just picked like a number so that was the reason um nothing yeah. nothing more nothing less so that's that's some that's something that's fun to play with though i, I had a, uh, a business called hexeter for a number of years and we chose Hexeter. We had like come up with all these names for it, you know, dozens, hundreds of names to choose. And we chose Settle in Hexeter and, but we didn't have a reason. So, but I played around with it. Like what's Hex mean? And, you know, or Hexa or, you know, <laughs> and I tried to come up with like actually some copy that was around. Like, how could I, how can I make this work? What does it mean? You know, the number of themes, the number of, you know, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, cool. We, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, that, that's kind of brings us up to date. Like we yeah. are currently at five, a team of five. Um, we've got a few projects on the go. Um, you know, things are, are going pretty well. Like we're hoping to bring on one more person later this year. Um, we're thinking that with just with the projects we have in the pipeline, um, yeah. you know, that we can continue to grow. Um, I, I think one thing which I kind of alluded to, but um, maybe is, is something we could say for a different day uh, is like my, I, I switched from being a developer to really just running the business, doing business development yeah. and then also marketing. And that was a really big shift. Like I, I really feel like I'm in a different job now. I'm in a different career than I was in the first decade of my life, my professional life. Yeah. Um, it. I mean, it's scary and it's, it's like, I'm, I feel that imposter syndrome again, where I'm having to learn all this stuff again. Um, but it's yeah. fun. Yeah, I think that's what keeps it interesting. Yeah. We, we talked, we've talked a little bit about, uh, like what, you, what you're doing for marketing and trying to have to learn stuff on the fly and come up with a strategy and, and you've decided that you're going to get some help in that realm with marketing. Yeah, I, it was a little bit of a journey. Um, you know, we didn't really do much marketing other than me posting on LinkedIn every now and then, which wasn't, I wouldn't even say that's marketing. That's just me yeah. writing things on the internet. Um, but <laughs> I, I think what we realized was, um, well, what I realized kind of learning a bit about what other companies do. And it, it was tough because we're a little bit of a different type of company. We're not like a product company. We're a service company and we're also a very niche um, type of dev service company. So thinking about how to market us is is a bit challenging. Um, you know, it, I think a lot of the traditional stuff you see doesn't work because we're B2B also, we work with companies. Um, so what we ended up uh, doing is uh, one of my friends runs a marketing agency called Future Proof. And they are fantastic from in terms of understanding a business, understanding the needs, figuring out how like the positioning, the messaging, the strategy, all that stuff. And, and then eventually that trickling into the copy that you write on the website, the content that you create. Yeah. Um, and I, just, I realize I'm like, I'm too deficient in that stuff. Like I, I, I just, 
I know enough to know what I don't know. So I, I just figured, let me get some help with it. Yeah. Also, I just don't have like the time uh, and expertise to yeah. do all that stuff. So um, that's good. I mean, that'll give you a good foundation, even if you if you start doing other, you know, some of the, get more involved with that. You have help to get that foundation in place. Um, yeah, you can't. It's hard to do everything. Um, I try. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. No, even, even I, no. <laughs> I have some help, and and if and I think even myself, I know there's things that if I needed to do marketing wise, mm. um, I would have to get help as well. Um, you just got to be like where I'm at right now. I'm good, you know, with the people that got helping me and, and with what we're doing. Uh, but if I needed to scale up, I would for sure have to uh, either bring somebody in house on board or or hire out. Um, so that, that's an important decision to make. Um, you have to assess where you are. You know, obviously the budget's got to be there and all that too. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot a lot we didn't even touch on today. But I think we had a great conversation. I loved you know th- talking about um, uh, you know how to learn and all that stuff is so important for any developer. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some developers that um, or aspiring developers that listen to this and get inspired by, by this. I don't, I don't think it's an uncommon story. I think a lot of people, uh, web developers, whoever programmers uh, say that that's the things we talked about are probably uh, very common in terms of doing projects, just start do, building stuff. And because we're on the podcast, the builders, that makes even more sense. Um, to tell you that, <laughs> but yeah, but it's been a great conversation. Um, we'll ha- definitely have to do a part two, three, four. Uh, how was, how was your first podcast? Cause this, uh, if we didn't mention it already, this is Jeff's first podcast ever. I said, this is the one to do cause I'm pretty laid back and it'll be a comfortable experience. Oh, it was, you fun. think you'll do another I- one? I, I, I thought so. I mean, when the uh, countdown happened and, you know, the little recording button on top in the top of the on the screen there did kind of distract me a little bit at points. But I think once we got into the conversation, I, f- I forgot about it. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. I, I may be a little bit more motivated to do more of these in the future, I think. So we'll we'll definitely have I think you're a natural. <laughs> It's that imposter syndrome, that <laughs> the imposter syndrome. It trickles down to every part of your life. You know, you feel. Well, that's, uh, well, it, yeah. that's a whole nother conversation. You know, yeah. you, you know, even in business and, and uh, you have to even what I'm doing, I'm doing it. Does that mean that it was a natural transition for me to do podcasts? Not really. I had to just start doing it and uh, working through it and becoming more confident over time and figuring out my thing. Yeah, um, well, I mean, uh, but, really, thank thank you for inviting me because I think this pushed me. This this was kind of the thing that pushed me to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I had been asked before to to come on a podcast and pretty much just said uh, I'm kind of busy, I don't have time, and it just made every excuse. So I think our conversation um, before and then you you just kind of prompting me and asking me to come on was was a good thing. I don't take no for an answer, people. <laughs> I, I got him on the first, his first podcast. All right. Yeah. Well, until next time, uh, we will we'll definitely try to have you on again. I, it's a great conversation. We've got so much more we can share. Um, thanks, everyone. Until next time. All right. This is where I hit stop. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this podcast or provide me with requests on topics for future episodes, please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, Unified Web Design. That's my agency. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you're interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner, to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top. Fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.